I think it's just in my blood. Don't get me wrong, I love a lot of sports, but I just think, you know, everyone's has got a gift. I think everyone's born with a gift. Uh, and I think I was just lucky enough to find mine. And I think with people that haven't found it yet, just keep going out there and trying to find it because I think everyone has got a talent. Um, I think just, like I said, as much as I, I love playing the game, I'd prefer the other side of it where the thinking, the mental, the coaching, that's the side I, 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 I truly love. It wasn't until I think it was, I think I was in year five or year six, but I never got picked. I never got picked for the, for the, the, I can't, the regional team. I uh, never got picked. And all my mates got picked. The same team I, I, I played on the weekend, they all got picked and I didn't get picked. So, I, yeah, I was disappointed, but I thought, well, I'll get another chance. Um, but I remember my, my dad's mate, uh, I think it was Danny Messazama. He's, he's, I think, Sammy, he was a little jockey. He went up to the coach. He said, you just made the biggest mistake ever. And the coach has gone, why? He goes, you didn't pick him. He goes, well, I didn't think he goes, mate, he's our best player. He goes, so you're, you know, you're an idiot for not doing it. So I, I left for a couple of days. And then I remember that coach that picked the squad came to my school at Smithville Public School. And he had turned around and said, I want you for the regional team. So I said, oh, okay. I was on the bench. I didn't play that much. But the, the times that I did play, I ended up playing well and I got picked from the district straight into the regional team in that first year. And then from there, I got picked into the state team. And then from there, I got picked into David Lee's squad, which was, that's where I started really to learn how to, to play football properly. And that's when I got introduced to, you know, the players like Brett Emerton, Paul Reed. They were all there and they were talented players. They were way better than me. But like I said, I, I suppose I had a, had a great attitude you know, a, a willingness to learn. And, you know, the one thing that I've always had is, is a good work ethic. And I wanted to, to get better and learn. And I, I, I suppose I just soaked it all up. And, you know, it just went from there and, and continued throughout my whole career. Venables took a risk in many people's eyes, not going for a more experienced striker. But that's his first ever goal for the Socceroos. Playing football day in, day out at the highest level, you, you, your body's already ready for it. You know, you're you're ready for the, the physical challenges. You're ready for, I suppose, the fans and, you know, the abuse that you're going to get because it's, it's, it's an away game. But again, that kind of never really affected me. Um, you know, walking, walking out on that stadium, which was, it's, it's an historic stadium. You know, I think there was 128,000 people there. I only think there was only about a handful of Australians. So, you know, playing in front of, you know, 128,000 oppositions is you know, quite daunting, but it looked like a coliseum. You know, it, it looked phenomenal, you know, walking out there. And let's just say the pitch wasn't the pitch is what you see today. You know, they'll they be bobbly and, and, and patchy and a bit dirty and, and, and dirt elsewhere and all that. But again, it's what we were used to at the time. And, and, and again, I suppose I, I was playing up front. Um, and again, I enjoyed the, the kind of freedom of, you know, dropping in behind and all that. Because I was, like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't a striker. If, if I wasn't told I was playing the number one striker, you know, I'd be able to, to, to move between the lines. And, you know, that's one thing I was, I was always, if I played striker, I'd, I'd play the striker. I'd always push up, make the pitch as big as possible. But if I played that number 10 role where I could just float in between, I was very hard to kind of pick up. I remember the, the cross coming in. It's one of them that you think, well, this is the perfect ball because I know the centre half can't get it. He thinks he's going to get it. And I remember coming to my right foot and just, again, just laying it up and just pushing it onto my left-hand side. A lot of people will kind of try to blast it, you know, and try to blast it. And if you blast it, like a golf shot, you keep your head up, the ball's going to go straight over the bar. So the one thing I try to tell a lot of, lot of, lot of players now when I coach is just hit the ball down the ground. And I think I remember hitting it down and into the corner. And, and obviously, it went in the back of the net, which was fantastic. And we, I think we, we took a 1-0 lead. Um, and like I said, I, I felt we kind of dominated the game. But again, you know, we kind of slipped up by allowing them to kind of get back in the game. Because I think, I suppose, I, I felt over the two legs, we dominated the majority of it. But in football, the opposition will always have a spell. And I think, you know, especially in Tehran, they had that spell and they scored in it. You know, which was a shame. But, you know, going one all back at home, you know, to, to qualify for probably the second World Cup, it was a huge thing for, for Australia. So we went, we went back there. We were confident. 
but obviously, you know, we, we took a 2 0 two nil lead and uh, it didn't work out in the end, which was, you know, damn shame. The strange thing about that competition was every team stayed at the same hotel. So you'd be walking around, getting in an elevator, and you may get in an elevator with Rakova and Ronaldo or Ricarlos or, you know, some of the other players. It was quite surreal, but it was fun. Um, and we enjoyed it. But going into that, like, uh, semi-final, you know, I think everyone kind of thought Uruguay were going to win. You know, it was going to be an all South American final because Brazil would have got there. That's it. Saudi Arabia was the other team. And we ended up playing them. And, you know, I think the, the rivalry goes back to, I think, the under 23s, the Olympic team with Muskie and Mori and all that when they played Uruguay. I think there was a lot of rivalry between there. So that kind of built up. So it was a, it was a very physical, physical game. The challenges that were going in from both sides were horrendous horrendous if I could say that but it was tough and we were, we were fighting and it, I think it was the only time I've ever played golden goal and uh, the golden goal kicked off it was a couple of minutes into it maybe about four or five or something and I remember receiving the ball just on the, the right hand side whether they were tired or whether they thought nothing of it like I said you put me in that position just outside the box or just outside the box about 15 yards out me running at someone, that's my bread and butter. That's what I enjoy doing, running at defenders, committing defenders. And like I said, I've always been a decent striker of the ball. So I knew if I get my shot off, anything can happen. And keepers always say anything close to the body is very hard for them. So I always remember that at a young age. It was a full-on lay strike. And I remember just striking as hard. And I think just right at the end, it just kind of bent away from the keeper. It's just like cricket, you know. The ball's come straight down there. He's, he's thought he's blocked it and it's just taken a little swerve and he's it's just nicked it. And like I said, he's just nicked it and it's just gone straight in. And like I said, it was a relief. You know, it was fun. It was enjoyable. And I think the relief of the whole team, you know, because like I said, this was a, a young young team coming up and it was exciting. And we've just made, you know, a final for the first time, you know, against arguably probably one of the best national teams, you know, a world has ever seen. Um, so. We were excited. We were obviously nervous, but like I said, we enjoyed the night, you know, and it was a special night because, like I said, it, it got us into the final. The one thing that we were always good at, you know, from the Australian team is we, we knew how to celebrate. You know, we knew how to enjoy ourselves and, and we've always had coaches that allowed it. And I think good coaches uh, allow it, you know, as long as you don't get carried away. You know, you have to enjoy moments like that because they don't come across too often. And that is a very cool finish indeed by a superbly talented footballer. But we all know the rivalry between Australia and England, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm not just talking the cricket, you know, rugby union, rugby league, tennis, anything that's got Australia v England, I think the two countries come together and it's just, for some reason, there's just a competition there. Um, so when the, obviously the friendly came up of Australia v England, uh, well, England v Australia because you were in England. You know, we we're excited. You know, don't you? There, there was a lot of talk because there was about six boys that were playing from Leeds in 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 in, in the squads. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I, personally, I feel that England knew this was going to be a tough game. You know, and the way that they were talking from the get go, they actually, I I, I felt they they weren't up for it. From, from day one, you know, and, you know, I, I knew from my Australian team, we were all playing at a high level, we were playing in the Premier League. Most of us were playing in the Premier League. You know, if not the Premier League, we were playing in La Liga. If not La Liga, we were playing in Serie A or the Bundesliga. We were playing at all the top levels. So that generation we were playing, we were playing in all the top leagues. So we were confident. From, from day one, we were confident. And, you know, we would have a little bit of banter, you know, with the players and, and all that, and then, uh, we're going to destroy you. And I was like, yeah, okay, good one. Uh, and I even, I even remember I had a bit of a thigh strain. And I remember um, uh, Terry Venables was obviously my Leeds coach at the time, you know, and he didn't want me to play. So I ended up going down with Australia because Australia said, now let's check it out. And Les was there. And I've had some, had some good, I've had some great physios in my time, and I've had some poor ones. And I had a great physio at Leeds, Dave Hancock. He was fantastic. He, he didn't want me to play. He says, H, 
Yeah, you can't play. You can't play in this game. We've got an FA Cup with Crystal Palace on the weekend. So, no, you can't play. You could strain. You could be out for, you know, six, seven weeks. He said, all right, I'm going down to see Les. And, 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 you know, Les looked at him and went, yeah, no, you're okay, mate. You know, you're okay. As long as you treat it, we look after it. And, you know, you, you, you're not going to play 90. You know, there's a friend anyway. So, who cares? You know, you, you'll be right. So, like I said, I've always believed Les. Les is my, my number one. He's, he's always been the, the best physio I've ever worked with. And, you know, I ended up having him as my own personal one because he, he's, he's that good. And I still keep in contact with him to this day. So when he says, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'll go play. We heard all the talk about, you know, they were going to play the two teams, you know, one first half team, one second half team. And we're sitting there going, oh, do what you got to do. You know, it's a, it's a football game, you know. Whenever there's a friendly, there's, it's not a friendly. You know, everybody wants to win. And like I said, I think the damage was done in the first half anyway. You know, I, I think we, we went out there, we, we, we had a good tone, we had a good... Uh, um, we had a good plan. And like I said, we had players that were playing at the highest level. Week in, week out, you know, playing against Rio, you know. I think Rio was still at um, Leeds then at the time, was he? Or I can't, I, can't, I can't remember. So I knew about, I knew, yeah, playing Rio, training against him. So I knew that, you know, you, you, when you played against Man United, you're playing against goals, you're playing against um, Beckham, you know, you got Lampard. You, you know their movements, you know their patterns, you know. So... And I suppose they just got shocked, you know, because we were up for the fight. And uh, like I said, even when um, we scored, I think we scored first through Popovich, through a, through a header. So again, Popovich was playing for Crystal Palace at the time. You know, big, solid defender. You know, you, you kind of give, cross comes in, you give him a free header, where's he going to do? He's going to stick it in the back of the net. So again, he's stuck in the back of the net, you know. And again, you're playing against Sol Campbell as well. So it's not, and David James, they're all, Gary Neville was there. So they're all proper defenders and these are all winners. You know, this is this is not a team that don't like losing. But again, I think we just put them on the back foot straight away and they just couldn't kind of budge in that first half. And, you know, I had that opportunity down the line where where um, Lucas played me down, down the line and it was a, a sprinting race with me and Rio and, you know, for, for whatever Rio says, he was never quicker than me. So he was always going to lose out. And again, he he's, he, he lost out. He, he tripped over himself and, and gave me an opportunity. And like I said, I, I ran in there. And the one thing you don't want to do to a player running at you like James did and is is to kind of make it easy for you to... I know they try to say, cut, the, cut it out so you don't kind of give them too much space where they can kind of bend it round, but he showed me that much space down the right hand side that I went to play it down there where he kind of fell for it and I just cut it back and just kind of just took it round him and by that time they had an empty net to, to kind of slot it in. What a moment! And Harry Kuehl's involvement and impact is immediate. Well if we go back even prior before the, the first game in Uruguay I was injured at Liverpool you know I, I, I was coming back so I wasn't fully fit um, and obviously meeting up with the, the Australian team, I actually didn't think I was going to start at, in, in Uruguay. I didn't think I was going to in Montevideo. I, I didn't actually think I was going to start there. I thought you'd probably start me more in Australia than in Montevideo. So I remember going there, not expecting it, doing some training and all that, and I remember starting and remember playing a full game. And I was knackered. I, I have to say, I was, I was exhausted because it was my first full game. But again, we had the, the, the proper treatment. We had the proper facilities. We had our own private plane coming back. Everything was, was second to none for what Australia did, which was fantastic. Um, and, and I felt good. I have to say, I felt good. And coming back, one nil down. And it's, it's strange because you'd rather, like, yeah, of course you want to be winning. But it's like, it can be a hindrance being winning one nil, you know, away from home because you just think as a, as losing, you think, well, we're just going to give it all. If we go 2-0 down, we go 2-0, but we've just got to give it all. So you kind of step, you start on the front foot. And I always think if a manager or a coach can figure that out, what can kind of switch a player to say, okay, we're 1-0 up, but let's go out there on the attack. For some reason, you just have this, players have this mental difference between aggregate of being up on a, up on a game and, and, and being down, where you can just get more when you're down and when, you, when you're up. And I think a lot of coaches now, like I, I do in my coaching, is like when you play games now, you, you start a five-a-side or seven-a-side and say, okay, one team, you're one nil down and you're one nil up. You know, just to kind of give them that kind of experience about it. 
Uh, so going back to Australia, I thought, okay, well, when my nail down, he's definitely going to start me. I, I thought I'd start. There's no question about that. I uh, did all the work, did everything like that. And then, like I said, I, I've seen interviews from behind where obviously where Arnie and Hitting have, have spoken and, you know, Hitting has not picked me and Arnie didn't give me the bibble. And I, I remember when he didn't give me the bibble, I was like, are you serious? Like, are you, like, really? And look, as any professional player, they'd be lying if they wouldn't. Yeah, you'd be hurt. You're hurt. But then you, you kind of put your head back on and go, okay, well, I don't play an individual sport. I play a team sport. So I've got to be there for the team. So I've got to put my head now on that I've got to support the team. So that's what I did. I supported the team. And you kind of get your head around it. And don't get me wrong, you you make them calls. You know, you, you argue, you tell people, I can't believe I, I can't believe I'm not playing. But that's that's your own private that's your own private feelings, you know, and but like I said, it's everyone does it. Um but like I said, you, you go out the next day and you, you, you've got to qualify for the World Cup, so you're there for the team. Yeah, you're kicking the ball around and you're waiting, but you're looking over and you think, oh, I wish I was there because the stadium was filling up, it was bouncing, it was cheering. And then, you, you, yeah, you, you're upset, but then you go into the changing room again, you, you're high-fiving everyone, getting everyone ready. And then you, you're sitting on the bench and you listen to the National Anthem and all you're thinking is, I wish I was out there. You know, I just, I just wish I was... I mean, you really... Why, why aren't I playing? You know, but like I said, you know, you're you're, you're a professional player, so you got to do your job. Uh, and like I said, I, I respect Hitting a lot. He's he's a magician when it comes to things like this. And I remember sitting there, and then when the game starts, you, you're in the game, whether you're on the bench or not. You're in the game. I'm like when I was on the bench, I was always still in the game because I'm always watching, seeing what I can do, what positions, and all that kind of stuff. So I was in the game, and I was ready. And I remember. Uh, we had we were sent out for a warm up, so we sent out five minutes and we came back like at ten past or something like that. Then I remember uh, the fitness guy Anthony Korea coming over to me. He goes, "Come on, we're going for a warm up." I said, "I just been." He goes, "No, no, no, you're coming on." I said, "What?" I said, "It's only been twenty minutes or something like that." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you're coming on." I was like, "Wow, okay." So I remember running down there, and he said, "Quick, quick, quick, quick!" And I think I did about like a minute, and everyone was like, going, "What's going on here?" And then I got the call to come back. He says, you're going on, good luck. So I remember, oh, okay. And like I said, I was always ready and I was prepared. And like I said, I I don't know whether it was meant or anything like that. Uh, I know that Pop had picked up a yellow. Um, and there was rumours of that. But like I said, I thought he was doing excellent. So it was just one of those things where, where the hitting saw something in the game that he needed to change. Like I said, he changed it and you know, came on. And then within a couple of minutes, we had scored. You know, and I, and I think in that game now, I just don't think Uruguay could handle us. And I thought we just got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I just think we were just unlucky not to win the game personally, like during the match. And it was a shame that it went to extra time. Uh, and it, but like I said, it was it was a tough game. And I remember even back in Liverpool, you know, all the, all my all my players and all my mates were watching it as well at the, at the thing because it was the last two teams. One team was going to qualify. And obviously going into penalties and all that, it was nervous, but it's it's something that if you're the first penalty taker, you always want to score because it kind of eases the tension, you know, on everybody else. And you, you may say, oh well, if you miss it, you got four other chances. But I always think if you get your first one, and I I, I never understood. I, I I get it why the best players go last, but sometimes the best players never get to take a penalty. And I always think you should always have your best players like to kind of get you off to a good start because I think keepers, like we always knew Swartz was going to at least save two or get his hands hands to two, right? We always knew that, you know, and when you looked at ours, we felt that at least, okay, one may miss, you know, one may miss. Did not think it was going to be Baduka, but it, 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 it was, but like I said, it was it was one of those that, was just a, a night and like I said, I'd given my all and I was exhausted and like I said, at the end of the night, it was such a relief to, to kind of qualify and uh, yeah, we celebrated that night. He went straight in there, we were all singing Grease to him and all that, he was joining in, he was singing the Australian songs, we were all up and all that and I remember just sitting in the background and just because I was I was gone, I was cramping up, I was I was exhausted and just watching and going, but this, this is a moment that you've got to enjoy. I said, you, you have to enjoy it. And uh, I enjoyed it. And I got my picture taken with him. And, 
which was fantastic. And, you know, I ended up getting my picture taken in 2010 as well, which he remembered, so which was fantastic. Australia's golden boy has come up with a golden goal. It just had to be Harry. Talking about the Croatia game, we knew uh, that a draw would set us through, you know, which, again, you don't really want to hear that kind of news because we felt that Brazil would beat Japan. You know, unless it was a, a, a freakish kind of result, which would have hurt us. Um, but we knew for draw, we'd go through. So we, we, we set out there and like I said, our team was feeling good. Two minutes into the game, we go one nil down with a free kick. And, you know, you think, okay. And you may think as a, as a fan or as a, as, a, as, a, as a team, you may think, oh, well, you know what? It's, it's okay. You know, it, it, it's 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 not good that you've gone down, but in football, it's, it's actually that's the best time to concede a goal. You know, because you've got 88 minutes to kind of correct it. And like I said, I think that just kind of boosted us, boost us up. And again, I, I felt we felt confident then, and we just went from strength to strength. And then and uh, we ended up putting pressure on there, got the goal um, uh, by Maurice Penley, which was fantastic. We went in at halftime, and we felt comfortable. We're not going. I'm not going to lie. The, the manager was happy. He was, you know, done a little bit of tactics here and there. Um, and then we went out there the second half and, you know, Kalats made a, a, a mistake, which, again, in football, you know, I could miss an easy chance in, in front of goal and he could be looking at going, how did you miss that? But like I said, not one of us got down about it. We just said, okay, let's pick ourselves up again. And we pushed and pushed again. And I think, again, our fitness and our, our confidence at that time was, was second to none. And, you know, we had a we had a couple of opportunities which were just missing. And again, uh, I think you can kind of look at the goal I scored against Croatia was a bit like the goal I scored against Iran. You know, where instead of really a Vidmar putting it in from the left hand side, Brush has kind of put it in from the right hand side. I was out, out wide, and I always say to my wide players, always get on the edge of the end, end of the box because nine times out of ten, fullbacks go to sleep. He, he was asleep. I think it was Simic. Uh, and, and I remember the cross come across and I remember making that run in there. And again, I was gambling. You know, there was about three or four people in between that that the ball could have went anywhere. It's, it's exactly the opposite to what my Tehran goal was. So the ball's coming across in Tehran where I've done it with my right to hit with my left. The ball's come across with my, uh, with Brescia's board. It's dropped and I've kind of, again, taken it with my left and put it onto my right. And again, just hit the ball down. But seeing that ball go into the back of the net, not only because it made it too all, and not only because I, I felt, I, well, I, I didn't know that was going to get us through because we didn't know what the Japan, uh, Japan score was. I think it was just, and you can see the relief on my face is because I've just scored on the biggest stage of football, you know, and that's exciting. You know, not many, not many people, not many players get to the opportunity to, to score or, you know, and then, you know, turning out, obviously, that goal became the goal to kind of make us through to the last 16, which, you know, we were kind of never expected to, to kind of make, you know, but I still believe we won that game because John Anawishti actually scored a third goal, you know. So for me, we actually won that game. And obviously, uh, one of the players, Joe Simonich, was it? That got three yellow cards, you know. So for me, it was, it was tough um, to accept not winning. But when we found out that Japan had lost and we got through, Yes, again, the celebrations were, were excellent. And as for Harry Kuhl, well, age shall not weary his nose for goals on the biggest of stages. I suppose the one thing about being Australian is that we're, we're kind of open. You know, we're kind of open people and we like to travel and we like to communicate and we like to make friends. So I, I've kind of never really had, like, one person who I just hung out with. You know, like we had we had players that kind of stuck together all the time, but I suppose because I was kind of an individual in a way, but, you know, I'd always just come into scenarios and, and all that. I mean, Lucas used to make me laugh. You know, Luke Wilkshire, the Dukes, you know, um, Craig Moore, you know, Muskie, Spider, Bosnich. I mean, don't forget, right, I was 17 when I first met Bosnich and first time you hear his laugh, you know. <laughs> You're like, what the hell is that? You know, so... He used to make me laugh and he looked after me so much. I mean, I remember he used to room with Bozza and he used to just tell me stories and I'd be up there creasing laughter while he's just laughing as well, you know. So, and even when you get to the, like the, the, the older ones, you know, Vinny with his dry sense of humour, 
you know, was 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 so funny, you know, at, at, at times. And you know, John McCain was there. He was he used to make me laugh as well. I mean, but even even like the physios, you know, Les Colsey, you know, uh, Luke, Gary Moretti. Like I said, I think we all made each other laugh. We were all serious when serious matters happened, but when we laughed, like we laughed. And like you couldn't get away with anything in the show because if you stuffed up, everyone would have a go at you. You don't get to meet up with all your players all the time. So when you do meet, you have to be on top form to be able to perform, to be able to take information on, to be able to ask, well, to be able to, to fulfill what the manager needs, you know, in the space of a week. You know, and then, you know, if you're playing a friendly, okay, you, you can you can try little things, but when you're qualifying for, for big games or tournaments and all that, you really have to concentrate and you have to be at your peak and you have to give all your like energy into into it. And I, like I said, it was a privilege playing for it because like I said, I always felt when you got that letter for international duty, it was like, well, hey, I'm, I'm doing well. And when I never got picked for it, it was because I wasn't doing well for my club. And so you have to play well for your club to get picked for your, for your national team. And, and I think that's an important thing that you have to understand.